Hi, my name is Rich McHugh, and welcome to the University of Victoria Library's Digital Scholarship Commons Infographics with Canva workshop. So why would we want to make an infographic in the first place? Infographics have the ability to dissect and highlight important aspects of a complex subject and hopefully sustain the attention of readers while doing so. Infographics help cover heavy topics in a more enjoyable way. People will often look at an infographic rather than read a text-heavy article containing pretty much the same content. Visuals can also help readers process the content more efficiently. And making infographics can help you anchor your story in your audience's memory. A well-crafted infographic is much more likely to have a broad public impact than a research paper, for example. So what we recommend is you do both. Write your academic paper or article, and then create an infographic that links back to your paper. This also facilitates public scholarship via sharing in social media platforms that privilege images, for example. Here are the multimedia principles of learning that relate to both infographics as learning objects, as well as using infographics as a, a learning activity. People learn better from words and pictures rather than words alone. The infographic here is based on a jargon-filled academic journal article, for example. People learn better when cues are added that highlight key information. When infographics are learning objects, the teacher selects and highlights the most important information. People learn better when the corresponding words and pictures are presented close to each other in time and in space. People learn better when extraneous material is excluded rather than included. The process of creating an infographic is itself the process of excluding extraneous information and highlighting the most important information for your readers. People learn better when they're encouraged to generate self-explanations during learning. When creating an infographic as an activity for learners, they will go through the process of self-explanation as they select information, make logical connections, and find graphical representations of what they're trying to communicate. You wouldn't start building a house without first creating a plan for how large you'd want the house and where all the walls, doors, and windows would go. And it's the exact same thing with an infographic. Planning can help us avoid design problems. An example here, would you design a bathroom door like this uh, on purpose? Probably not. Does the door work? Well, it does, but it's not ideal. A little bit of planning can help us avoid problems up front and make your life a lot easier in the long run. So I encourage you to do a little bit of planning before you start making your infographic. So what is going on here? This is an interactive infographic, but as you, if you notice the pie chart, the numbers add up to more than 100%, and this can be confusing for readers. I don't think they made a mistake here with the numbers, but what they probably did is had a question on a survey uh, that they could select multiple responses to so that the numbers for each of the, the parts of the question add up to more than 100%. Typically, you'd want to do this as a bar graph so it's not as, confu as confusing to your readers. So if we look at this infographic, it's harder to see, but the numbers uh, all add up to 100% here. And traditionally, uh, you'd use a pie chart to represent responses to a question where the numbers add up to 100%. Now, this is more of a guideline rather than a rule. And depending on what you do, you can, of course, uh, not follow this guideline. On the positive side, they made some graphical representations embedded in each of the, the bars, which is, is helpful. So this is a a chart that is way, way too busy. There's too much information they're trying to communicate, and it's not easy to understand at a glance. Now, this is uh, job losses in recessions post-World War II, and they've included every single recession since World War II. If I was creating this chart, I'd probably try to identify the three or four 
uh, recessions that were most relevant to the point I'm trying to make, and then only include those so that it's easier to read, uh, what understand what's going on. So what is this infographic trying to say? Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure. It's attractive, but way too complex, and I think it's trying to do too many things in one representation. Um, we've got an internal couple of dates internally with some spiral uh, information, then we've got an, some more dates on the outside, and then icons and uh, of multi, uh, social media companies on the outside, but it's not entirely clear which direction these dates are, are uh, pointing towards. If I was doing this, I suspect breaking it into two different uh, two different sort of charts would be an easier way to represent or to describe what's going on here rather than trying to merge it all together into one. So infographics should tell stories. You want to make your infographic eye-catching, but also make sure that the important data isn't lost in the design. You want to make sure that the design is suitable for the medium you intend, whether it be a paper poster or a Facebook post or an Instagram story, for example. So Canva is a web-based piece of software that works somewhat like Google Docs, but for layout and design elements. Canva auto-saves your work so that you can work across multiple computers, and it also allows you to collaborate with, uh, with people working on your project if you want. Canva has a free and a premium tier, and the workshop uh, that you're going to start on in a minute, or the activities, utilize free tools only in Canva, so you don't need to pay any money. Uh, some of the templates we use uh, have paid for images and graphics, but you can delete those paid for images and graphics and use free ones. Um, and the instructions in each of the activities outlines how to do that. So you, if you follow along, you'll find all of the, the resources you need to make a free infographic. Canva has done a lot of the work for you by using templates and providing uh, clip art and images and uh, other resources for you to use. So for example, some of the uh, clip art objects, we can see we can see down here that this is the what the clip art looks like when you select it, but you can change some of the colors of the elements to match the uh, design and the colors you're using in your infographic so that they don't clash with what you're doing, or draw undue attention to the infographic. This is another example of, uh, of using templates in Canva. On the left is, a, is the template in Canva, and on the right is an infographic created based on that template. You'll see that the basic layout looks very similar, but the colors have been changed to match the UVic library colors, and the information has also been changed, of course, to uh, reflect, in this case, the 3D printing process in the library. One thing to note, if you're using something that would require uh, uh, mapping or you know statistics uh, province to province or state by state or country to country canva does not do a very good job of that there's another tool similar to canva called pico chart which you might want to uh, consider using if you're going to use something that requires uh, mapping data and if you'd like uh, to earn a, a digital scholarship badge that you could put on your LinkedIn account for this workshop. All you need to do is email uh, your completed infographic uh, to the email address here and we'll uh, provide you with a badge. So it's hands-on time so if you want to start working through the activities provided you can click on the link below here and if you have any questions please contact me and I'll give you a hand.